is the story of the skinny chief and the fat chief. He said it was said long ago, back before the time of the horses came and gave us the ability to hunt the buffalo much easier on the open plain. The creator had two sons and he gathered his two sons and he spoke to them and said that he would send them down to the earth to live among the people. And living among the people, he would take bring them home one day and see us, how they lived. Well, they were both born into the Lakota tribe in two different bands. Now, one of the brothers would later be known in his older life as the Fat Chief. You see, the Fat Chief was a very jolly man, a very humble man. He would give what he had to help those in need, even if he did not have much. One day, the Fat Chief was sitting outside of his lodge. As his wife was making him dinner and making food and supper. As he was sitting there, he heard this crying in the distance. And he looked over and he saw this young woman walking, two kids, sad and crying. Sister, come here. Sister. And they came to his lodge and they sat before him. Sister, what's wrong? She spoke about how her husband had fallen against the crow in the last battle, in the last war party. And how they had nobody to provide and how they were hungry, famished that they hadn't eaten in a long time. But sister, I have plenty of food. Sit and eat. So he offered some of the food that he had. And while she was eating, he would sit and he would tell the little ones stories, making them laugh and teaching them new lessons. Now, once their bellies were full, with a smile, they went on. He always let them know if that he was there if they needed more. A little time goes by and he hears another cry in the distance. It's an elder, an elder lady, a grandma lady, as they say. Looks over, sister, sister, what is wrong? What troubles you? She looks over to him and talks about how she has lost her family in her way and how she too was hungry. So the fat chief offered her some food and allowed her to rest there in his lodge. She was able to rest, gain her strength back before moving on. You see, this is how the skinny chief, this is how the fat chief lived his life. Very humble man. And he did this for all. That's why many people followed him. Much later on, after many summers had come and many winters have gone, the fat chief had grown old and tired, and soon it was his time to return home to the Creator, to cross over. And as he laid there in his bed, many, many came to mourn him, came to pray with him, came to see him before he crossed on. And they looked over to him, and as they were, they began to cry. And they looked up to the Tankashla, to the Creator, and prayed, Creator! Tankashila, please do not take our fat chief from us. Now, if you recall the beginning of my story, I said the creator had two sons that he sent to live among the people. The second son was much different than that of the fat chief. He too became a headman, but he was known as the skinny chief. Now, he was much different than the fat chief and lived his life much different. He was very mean, selfish, did not really give much. Well, he was eating out of his lodge one day. And this dog, this scraggly looking dog, skinny to the bone, you could see his ribs, came up begging for scraps. So he looked over and he saw this stick. And he reached down and picked up the stick and threw it at the dog. Get out of here. Go. Go away. This is how the skinny chief lived his life. Many years had come, by, come and gone. Many winters. And it was now his time to go home to the Tankashila, to the creator. 
Now, unlike the fat chief, nobody came to mourn him. And the only one sitting in his lodge was his wife. And when it was his last breath in time to cross on, his wife only shed one tear. And from that was relieved, for now she was free of him. Now, stories like these we tell to teach the young, to teach the old, to carry on our traditions, but each with a lesson. In this story, Lakotas, we have what we call the seven sacred rites, the second, seven sacred ways of believing, the second sacred laws. Seven is very big to us. One of the laws that we have are spiritual laws, Wawahula, which means to walk quietly, to walk humbly. If we look at these two chiefs, the fat chief and his brother, the skinny chief, the skinny chief did not have any mourn for him or cry for him when it was his time to move on. It was because of how he lived his life compared to that of the fat chief. The fat chief was a very generous man, very kind man, very humble. That is why many came to pray and came to cry for when it was his time to go home. So that is one traditional story I, I wish to tell you, that of the skinny chief and the fat chief. Looking at my time, I'll tell another. Long ago, as many of our stories go, there were instruments that we had to sing our songs. First instrument we had was that of the shaker, the bull roars, the drum. During this long ago time, this instrument here, we call this the the flute did not exist. See, long ago time, this instrument was given to us. It was gifted by both Hwakanuka, the woodpecker, and Hayaka, the elk. Now, I will tell the story as it was told to me by my uncle. Now, there are many stories for the creation of this instrument, but the main thing that we all agree upon how it was used for the idea of love. It was there was this young man who was out hunting elk. Now the thing about elk in our culture, we say Haka, the elk, is the owner of the love charm. It is said if a young man has strong elk medicine, he can attract any woman he likes. This young man had no elk medicine. And he hunted him, and every time he would notch his bow ready to shoot, the elk was out of range. So he trailed the elk, trailed the elk, until the sun set was coming. He decided to give up the pursuit, and instead find a place to rest for the night before continuing back the next morning. Well, he found him a spot by the river. And he made sure he ate some of his washna. Washna is very strong food. Keep you going for days. It's the pound, kidney meat pounded with choke cherry. It's strong for a warrior. As he laid eating and finished in settling in, he pulled his buffalo robe up around him. And he became fearful. Because it was like all the night sounds came to life. And it felt like the first time he was hearing him. The hooting of the owl. The crickets singing. The frogs. He got his bow and notched it and kept it near him. Then on the wind he heard. This was a new noise for him. It sound it scared him a little. It sounded ghost-like and mournful, but beautiful. 
soon the young man would find himself falling asleep. And then he had a dream. And this dream, he looked up and above him in a tree was Wakanuka, the woodpecker. And the woodpecker moved to another tree not too far away. And he walked up and he looked at him. And the woodpecker looked back. Kola, friend, follow me. Follow me, I have something I must show you. So the young man in his dream followed the woodpecker and continued until he came up to this dead cedar tree and he looked up as the woodpecker was pecking on this branch and the wind was blowing and he heard that noise. He woke up. And sure enough, above him was the woodpecker. And as the woodpecker, similar to his dream, moved from tree to tree. And now as he did, he followed him just like in his dream, the young man, till he came up to the branch of a cedar tree. And he heard that noise. He saw the branch and he took it. And broke it off. Call our friend. Let me take this for you can make another. He took this instrument home. Happy. All the same. Even if he did not find that elk. And as he sat there. In his lodge. Tried playing. But it made no noise. This made him very sad. He decided to go into the Anipi. Or the sweat lodge. To purify himself. And go on Humblecha which is that of the vision quest. And he sat up on the hilltop for four days and four nights and fasted until the final day he had another vision. It was the woodpecker who came to him and the woodpecker showed him, this is how you do it, make it like this, how to carve the first flute. Well, after carving it and showing how to do it with the bolstering drill to drill the holes to extend the neck out like the birds with long necks and open beaks. He turned himself into a man and showed how to play. So the next day, the young man went and found him a cedar branch and carved it just as the woodpecker had shown him in his dream. And from there, he made the first flute and played it. Now it was said, because he did not shoot the elk, he Haka decided to bless that instrument for him with his own medicine. Well, much later on, the young man found the young woman that he wished to court. But she was very, very proud. She was the chief's daughter. So he waited till right around dusk. And he said he played her a song on his sealed honka. It grabbed her attention. And the medicine drew her and attracted her to him. She saw him outside of his her lodge holding a blanket. Well, she went and grabbed that blanket, took it to the lodge they were now courting. The years would pass and these two would fall in love and would marry. And he too would eventually become a chief of his nation. He told the story of the first flute and soon many, many others would go, many other young men would go and make flutes very similar to the one the young man made. And just like the young man, blessed by Hayaka's medicine, was able to attract the young woman that they desired. And soon it was a way of courting. So story goes, so legend. These are, story, these are just a few traditional stories that we have in our cultures. There are 583 different tribes here in the United States, not including Canada, not including Mexico, Central America, South America, or indigenous people from all around the world. But I thank you for allowing me to share some of these stories with you. And I hope you all have a blessed day. Balama yeyalo, wobila. We don't have words for goodbye in our languages. Until next time we meet, bookshake.